All right, so I'm here with Dennis, and we're talking about harvest. So what do your days look like during harvest? Um, well, it's, it's very weather dependent. So we'll just take today, for instance, um, had a lot of fog this morning and dew, um, which slows us down in the morning. Um, we can't harvest um, when the plant is wet. Um, so we had to really, we had to wait till after lunch today. But so this morning I, I worked on some things on the yard, had a grain bin um, that we stored the grain in that had some issues. So I worked on that for a while, worked on some equipment and got it going. And then shortly afternoon, um, got going, started combining um, today. A lot of, like I said, a lot of times it's, it's earlier that we'll start combining, you know, maybe 10 o'clock, 9, 10 o'clock. But today, because of the fog, it was delayed quite a bit. So, um, and then, you know, we just, we combine, um, combine, you know, basically all day until either it gets dewy after, you know, in the sun, after the sun sets or um, until we get tired, pretty much. It's, we uh, put in a lot of long hours, um, you know, and sometimes things get, you know, like tonight, my grain bin will probably get full of wet corn, and so I probably won't go super late. But, um, but you know, we can, as long as the dew doesn't set in in the evening, we can kind of keep going too, so. Okay. Tell us about this combine. What, uh, what are we in right now? So we're riding in a John Deere 9560. Um, it's actually the smallest combine John Deere made at the time that it was made. Uh, it's about, 15 years old, um, probably be replacing it in a year, but harvesting uh, eight rows of corn at a time. Um, we have, uh, we're set up to um, do all the technology stuff so we can, we keep track of yields um, with the monitor, yield monitor. We have uh, GPS um, global um, uh, positioning uh, system that can keep track of where we're at in the field. Combine also has auto steer, so it's gonna follow the, the line that, that we planted, and um, I don't have to steer it, it's just gonna um, follow that line and um, harvest the corn, so. Oh, that's cool. Running a system that's called RTK, um, and so it uses a combination of uh, the satellites and a stationary um, antenna that's actually on the tower over here. And so I'm accurate um, to within one inch. So, so I have sub-inch accuracy um, repeatable year to year. So I can come back and drive over this exact same spot within one inch um, oh, wow. and repeat that just year after year if I, if I need to. But it, it's, uh, it's a lot more accurate. Um, we, we use it for, like I said, for combining. We use the same system to plant, to spray, to side dress, all of it, so you, we can drive through this field and not ride down the corn um, if we need to spray or um, anything like that. So it's, it's, an, it's a pretty incredible system that, that we can be that accurate. There's an antenna underneath my seat that, that transmits um, to the cloud. Uh, a lot of times, actually, I don't run the combine. I have a, a guy that, that runs the combine quite a bit for me. And so I can actually be unloading grain um, yeah, at my bin site and I can pull out my phone and see what the combine's doing, what things are yielding and all that kind of stuff. So it, it all sends it up to the cloud and then it's view, viewable um, yeah, on my, on my account. So. so you can get on a laptop or whatever and, and see what exactly what how much yield was in this particular spot? Yeah, yeah, correct. So it uh, it keeps track of you know this uh, your position as you go through the field, and it knows that yield and and the moisture. It can, I can look at the speed that you were going. So like at planting, we can go different speeds. We plant a lot of different populations um, in the field. Population of the corn um, dependent on the fertility of that area and the previous yield history. So it changes the population as we go through the field. It knows where the highly fertile areas are at and puts more corn plants there because that area can sustain a higher yield and more corn plants. So you just told us that the end of the row is coming up? 
Well, it, it knows it, so oh, it, it, knows. it just beeped and told me that my turn is about to happen. Okay. Um, and so, do you have to turn it, or does it turn itself? So, on on this unit, I turn it. Um, the the newest machines um, have the ability to once you're started in the field and you have everything ready and going, then it um, uh, it will turn itself in the field. Okay. Um, but this is an old enough machine; I don't have that ability yet. So, okay. I, I had no clue that you have that kind of tech where you can yeah. see exactly what you're pulling out of the field, and I didn't know it was that exact one. Yeah. One and and not yeah. not everybody has this system. I mean, there's there's lower levels of it. This is kind of the, as far as accuracy goes, it's kind of the top tier, top level. You don't necessarily have to have that accuracy most of the time. It's just it's really nice when you're when you're spraying, um, and we do a lot of side dressing. So we put on fertilizer after the plants come up to help. Um, we, we look at what the uh, what the season is like so you know May and June sometimes is very wet and so we can look at and in, in the end of, end of May we'll look at if it's been a wet um, spring we might go put a little bit extra nitrogen out there because all that moisture might have leached a little bit of the nitrogen out so we're instead of going and putting it all out at once and planning for it to be wet like this year it happened to be dry so we put less nitrogen on because we figured we, we didn't really lose any to the environmental conditions. And so we're trying to, we're trying to you know, be good stewards with the nitrogen and, and we're trying to make sure that we're not putting out more than we have to. Mm -hmm. And so then that way, so when we come back out after that plant is up, it's really nice to have that accuracy. Um, you know, if we were riding over corn, you'd, you'd see places in the field where there was no corn and I mean, you just you just don't see that in the field right now because of that accuracy. And the the really nice thing is you can come in and I've I've drove through here driving eight nine mile an hour, um, you know, even close to ten mile an hour um, side dressing and standing corn, and you just don't run over anything because it's so accurate. Um, and that's that's why I went to that system. But not everybody has has that system. Um, some people use a lower not or a system that doesn't have quite as much accuracy and it still does it still gives you a lot of good information so so why would they use something with lower accuracy is it less expensive it's or? it's less expensive so there's a the the lower accuracy most of that those signals um, are free with just the communication between the satellites and just like it is in your car you know or your phone that's all free and it can communicate with you know with those satellites and and so this this system definitely costs more money um, but like I said, we feel like we get the we get the return um, to the investment um, and being able to you know maybe some years putting on less nitrogen, maybe some years putting on a little bit more to make sure that we get a good yield to um, you know to help th help pay for things. So this year in in uh, almost all the fields in the in the area, we're seeing a new disease um, called tar spot, and um, basically it looks like the the leaves kind of look like they've been kind of sprayed with tar. They, are, they have uh, black spots all over them. Um, it kills the plant, kills the leaf tissue where that, that spot is at. Um, we, uh, we were spraying in, uh, oh, about the first part of July, we were spraying fungicide um, to help with diseases in the corn. And um, we, uh, my agronomist noticed that there was tar spot in the field. So the fungicide that we we're spraying should kill the tar spot, but if you have a bad enough infestation, um, that fungicide that we were spraying lasts about three to four weeks. You have about that much protection. And so I'm guessing what happened this year is we had a pretty high infestation of it. We got the original um, infestation kind of killed, which gave the plant long enough to get down the road far enough that when it came back in about three to four weeks later, um, again, then we were late enough that it, it's, I don't think it's affecting our yield too terrible much. Um, but as we're combining, um, it's, it's basically turning everything black. The dust, the dust in the cornfield is, is worse than I've ever seen. Um, and the combine's just covered in a black um, dust. So all the combines, I'm sure, are, are almost black with, with this dust coming off the plant. And, and uh, 
it's kind of a new disease. It's a very new disease in this area. In fact, kind of the first year that I've really seen it, um, especially at this level, um, I've never seen this much tar spot. Um, so it's, and I, I've heard once it's here, it's kind of here to stay. So I'm guessing we'll be doing a lot of spraying of fungicide from now on out. How does that affect your costs? It's got to drive your costs up. Um, yes and no. I mean, we're gonna, we're, we were, we had been spraying fungicides prior to this. Um, so we were used to, we were used to that cost, um, but we were kind of spraying a, a little bit cheaper fungicide, um, one that one that kills what's on the plant but doesn't have any residuals, so it doesn't last for that three to four weeks like we talked about before. Um, this year I actually switched and I went to a little bit higher priced fungicide that had some residual. Um, I think next year we'll probably go with uh, the highest priced fungicide. So, like I said, we're kind of used to spraying fungicide. We're gonna, we're probably gonna go to a higher priced fungicide now since we know we have tar spot just to try to get for sure that residual in the plant to, to so hopefully we only have to spray it once. So it's gonna add a, you know, probably another five to eight dollars an acre. Um, whereas fungicide is, is a fairly expensive process and a fairly expensive product to put on. So it's not adding a terrible lot, but we're just adding a, a, another layer of protection to the plant to try to get rid of these diseases or to try to keep them from affecting the yield. So, oh, yeah. so it's, it's, and it's on both sides of the, of the leaf too. So that's the, that's the tar spot, you know, and it's, it's different on different leaves and, and you know, but it's there and it, it'll kill the plant prematurely. Um, Luckily, like I said, it's, it, it kind of came in, we had it protected and it came, this came in kind of late and it's really, I don't think it's affecting our yield too much, but if you don't, if you don't spray it like we did, um, this would have, you know, probably reduced our, our yield. I don't know, I'm guessing it could have reduced our yield 20, 30%. Okay. Um, it, you know, with the levels that I'm seeing and this is, this is bad, but I've, I've seen it in a couple other fields even worse than this, where the plant is, is you know, almost, almost completely covered, so. Yeah, and it, the one field, the one field I was in, it was even the tar spot was on the, on the husk of the corn, which I, you just don't see very much. But, yeah, um, well, yeah. there is a little bit on there, a little bit on the husk there, but yeah, it's, So it started in the east. So it's 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 been in Illinois longer, um, and it's kind of coming from from that direction and and moving west. Okay. Um, I don't know where it came from exactly, but I I know Illinois has had it for a couple of years, and uh, um, we saw two years ago. I think I remember seeing just a tiny tiny little bit of it, um, but this is the first year we've seen this levels of it. Um, and they, they say once you have it, we're going we're gonna to deal with it for a lot of years. So okay. we're probably just going to have to keep spraying for it. So you're just constantly fighting that. Yep. There's all, and there's all kinds of diseases, and that's why we spray the fungicides. Um, I mean, there's gray leaf spot. There's, I, I mean, there's just all kinds of diseases that come in the corn and, and actually in the soybeans. We spray, we spray fungicide on the soybeans, too, um, for those diseases. And, um, they really make a lot of difference and you know you work so hard to try to build this this crop you got to do what you can to protect it it's it's like having car insurance anymore you just you know you can't hardly afford not to not to spray the fungicide in my opinion it's because uh because of what we're seeing now so i wonder what it would have looked like if you hadn't sprayed it i had a a very small field um down in the river bottom that we didn't have sprayed and it's the, the leaves are almost completely covered. I would say there's almost twice as much tar spot on it okay. as what we're seeing here. Um, and so much tar spot, like I said, there's, we're seeing it on the husk of the, of the ear and stuff too. Okay. Um, and here we're not seeing it as much. It's mostly on the leaves. Um, but it's all the way through the plant. It's on the lower leaves and everything. So 